Hey folks, what are the Redneck Country Podcast? As always, Real Redneck Todd and Real Redneck Bill Tom. Bill, are you there? Happy Canada Day, Todd. And uh, yes, I'm here. It Enjoying is. the beautiful Canadian day and the weather. It's, it's beautiful. It is. It is Canada Day. Whoop, whoop. Happy birthday, Canada. Yeah. Happy birthday, yeah. Yeah, it's been a good yeah, day. Yeah, good day. Yep, nice weather out. I agree. And actually, my... Uh, I came in to record. My family's out sitting by the campfire, as we say, right now. Nice. Nice. Good day for that. For so, yeah. Sure. So, what's so, new? Hit me. What's new this week? Yeah. Had a, had a really good week. I got bachelor status at, at home here now. By the time this uh, post, uh, everybody will be back home. But for the next couple of days, I'm, I'm home alone because my family has gone up north to uh, uh, cottage. Uh, and left cottage. you behind? Well, only for a couple of days because I got to work, and then I'll be going up there Friday morning, and uh, I'm going to do some fishing and relax and try to do, you know, the social distancing thing the best that we can with the, the uh, Candace's aunt and uncle. But yeah. you know what? We'll be in the same place, and uh, we're doing the best we can to keep ourselves safe, and they're doing the best they can, and I think it's going to be a nice couple of days of relaxing. No cell phone coverage, no nothing. It's <gasps> up close to the uh, French River, uh, training post, and Oh, It'll be fun. wait It'll a minute. Are your kids there now? They are there now. Yep. They're up no north. No cell phone coverage? I was kind of worried how this was going to go. But, uh, you know, as the years progress, uh, the cell phone seems to be a, a glued piece of their their body. <laughs> uh, my daughter more than my son, to be honest with you. But um, I'm kind of interested to see how, how much she's twitching when I get there to have uh, uh, knowledge of what the rest of the world uh, you might have dodged a bullet not going up there with them. Yeah, well yeah it's, it's like people get saying. hangry they got sell angry <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> angry yeah. mobile but phone angry <laughs> there was some definite aha moments in the last couple of days and i tell you what I, I wanted to bring this up um you know we get on this podcast and we take take a lot of stuff for for what we do as as just what we do and you know our lessons that we teach our, our, our listeners and everybody that, that's around us we, we hope that we're sharing and and putting our best foot forward and stuff and you know i, I got on sunday uh, with my son and my youngest daughter we we're out in the garage we we're going through fishing gear and my son was uh, going through his tackle box and stuff and you know i, I take for granted because i've been do, doing it for so long the what certain things do and what uh you know a spoon is relative to a, a crankbait and and when he started asking these questions, I realized that I had left out a very key part part of what the dad responsibility is, is passing that knowledge down to my son, you know, because we don't do a lot of fishing together yet, you know, and, and it was a, a very humbling moment to start to ask those questions of, of each other, you know, my son would ask and I'd, I'd be able to calmly explain as to, Know, how to tie a knot or, or what, where you use a spinner bait versus why you, where you use a mips, uh, you know, and it, it was a really, really neat father son moment sitting in the garage, listening to some, some music and, and, and going over our fishing gear. Right? That would so. be awesome. I agree. It just look at it. Fishing gear. I love it. I know yeah. my, uh, my daughters will do the same when we're going up to the cottage or whatever, we get them their, they're, they have their own tackle box in the garage, but then it's we'll bring it out. And last year we went on a shopping spree because we knew the lure from the year before that we needed to have. And so my youngest was five at the time and her and grandpa went shopping to get these lures and, and trying to find them everywhere. We, we went on a mass hitting all the different stores and uh, local. And so my daughter came home. They were, I don't know how many, my dad went crazy. I mean, he bought like 30 or something of the same lure, just different colors. Yeah. So he could have them. And then him and my five-year-old sat there sorting them all out and put them in her t- tackle box. And, and that, it's just cool, man. You're sitting there around a bunch of lures and talking fishing and, and the thoughts that this one's going to catch something and this one's going to catch yeah. something. And then watching her ask which and where, and can I have this one? I want that one. And then there's some poppers and topwater frogs and, and stuff like that. And can I have this one grandpa? And yeah, like we're all going the same place. We're all going to be sure, in the same yeah. boat. So it's all good, but it was, it's, it is, it's just cool and sitting there just just having that out when you're if if you can't fish it's almost the next best thing to it 
That's right. And and that knowledge base now that I, you can see the excitement build and, and, uh, you know, my son was up there last year, uh, for the first time used the, uh, uh, the boat. And, uh, I, I think he's got a, um, uh, 9.9, um, four stroke, uh, with a tiller on the, uh, like a tiller, not a steering wheel column, but, and he was able to start it and go out on his own. So mm-hmm. the independence, the independence is starting to get there. And I could see that the wheels spinning in his mind that if I, you know, put this one on, I control a little bit. And, and, uh, you know, if I put this one, I can go in this weed bed and, and, oh, dad just showed me how to tie that Texas rig weedless so that I can maybe throw that worm at a, at a lily pad or something. And, and I could see the, you know, the, the knowledge base turning into maybe a plan, which could turn into maybe some, some really neat stories later on. So, <laughs> Yep. Just all you need now is gas and you ain't going to see them. <laughs> That's it. You know, it, uh, it's going to be a good, good experience. And my youngest daughter too. Um, I don't know where she got the knowledge, but, um, she feels that every time she goes fishing, looks at her fishing gear or, uh, thinks about fishing basically is, is entitled to a new fishing lure. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, uh, we went to, uh, like I told you on the last podcast, we went to that father's day trip to, uh, um, we'll stand archery. And she thought, well, we went fishing in the morning. So we better go to Cabela's and get another new lure. Cause we just, went fishing again you know so i think i got a little bit of a problem with my my youngest because she's got my tendencies to buy fish and tackle so <laughs> and they're not cheap anymore holy crap holy no and that's that's it so yeah we did that on uh on sunday on, on saturday hunter and i uh did a whole lot more to uh, touring around get uh um uh, things to for the boat renovation project that we're doing oh yeah so, how's that coming along yeah. Good. Yeah, we did real well. We went up to uh, to Midland and uh, uh, went for a drive, and and then we came back down to Barry and we bought uh, you know aerator pump, bilge pump, um, you know the, the some of the hardware, the just the the things that we need for the installation, and we uh, cut out and built a new transom for the back of the boat too. So it was a great day to to, to move the project forward a little bit and and uh, share some garage more garage time with my son, teaching him more lessons about tools and 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 why we do things a certain way so That's yeah a lot of knowledge transfer going on this weekend it was very very rewarding for me as a father and and uh you know somebody who has a little bit of knowledge to be able to pass it on to uh to my, yeah. my kids right? how we learned right so now it's just yep it's the cycle yeah so yeah we we're doing that and so i for you i i see you're doing a little bit more uh clay busting that at uh, the sporting clay range. Uh, yeah, well, so normally we don't shoot a whole lot of sporting clays as discussed on the last podcast. We do some, yeah. but it, it's all leisure, right? Like there's no big competitions. A- a- ATA trap shooting is the big deal where we're from. And just because I, I shared real estate and that. So yeah, now there we can't have ATA because of the COVID deal. So everything's getting canceled. We're hoping to have one in come up September, the provincials, uh, which anybody in the States, that's the state shoot for us. And so we're hoping to have that, but we're really still uncertain. So in the interim, yeah. as a shooter, and this is really bad to say, but you would notice that by this time of the year, your bank account's starting to get hurt from hitting all the ATA shoots so much. And so luckily you look at it and go, well, I've only really been shooting once a week. And only for like a month because the club was closed up until a month and it's just practice. So like you're getting maybe four rounds in if you're lucky. So we really haven't been shooting a lot. So now when they're having these leisure practice sporting clay days at some of the local clubs, which I typically wouldn't go to because I'd be shooting an ATA shoot somewhere because that's when they're normally on. I can go. And so, yeah, we're having a blind. I'm finding it. It is a, it is an absolute riot. We are having so, because it's so much more social than trap shooting. Yeah. Right. So, which is my, which is also a double-edged sword. If you're trying to concentrate and shoot, don't be in my squad. (laughs) Yeah. And you know what? I mean, so I saw your, so some videos from your squad and I saw you break two where everybody else was breaking six. Okay. I I, I may have to make a phone call and bring somebody on. So here's the gig. (laughs) That station, I I absolutely love it. They coming in hot, man. I mean, those targets come right at you so fast and I love it. And for me, I've always thought that was just like the easiest station on the course. 
It, honestly, I, 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 and that's not like toot my own horn. I struggle with other stations. I'm not going to lie. That one, for whatever reason, that's like, to me, you should ink ball every one of those. Like, it's just awesome. I love it. And you just wait till it comes almost to your barrel and you can yeah. boil them. The like, they're thing. just, they evaporate. And so, and it's, it's just, it's awesome. So I handed, we had Sandra that uh, came to the Redneck Country Trap Shooting Clinic last year and then bought a trap gun. She's been right into it now. And so she's now got, all, she's made all of her friends and, and gone and joined her gun club in that. And so she had all her friends coming, but unfortunately they didn't get there in time. So she will come shoot with us because we're just, Hey, easy going. And we had a, sure. we had a decent squad. So absolutely come with us. So I handed her my phone. So I, the two came and I ink balled. I mean, I, I really? boiled them suckers, right? Just it was nothing left but dust. Well, and that was the two you saw. So I, I boil. And at that moment I went, you know what? This is the third station from, so we start on a rabbit and then you go to a couple trap targets and then you come to this station and I love it. It's the first one in the woods. You leave the field, you go in the woods. And so I get in the wicket and I'm first to shoot. And I'm like, I, I love it. I've, I've shot it before. And if they haven't changed it much, I know these targets and I'm, I can't wait. This is my favorite station. So I smoked two and I thought, you know what? I haven't made a video yet. And I normally do right with, with clay crusher and that will go live on Facebook or do whatever. Well, I learned my lesson that cell signal is not that great. So you go live, it's a pretty choppy video. So that I'll record it first and then I'll post it later and then you ensure the quality. So I said, Sandra, Sandra, will you take, cause my dad's on the button. Another guy's got the scorecard. So Sandra, will you take my, my cell phone and just stand over my shoulder and all you gotta do is hit the big red button and just record me. And I'm, I got the scorecard still. I can back this up. I smoked all 10. I mean, I just boiled them <laughs> and I turned around. I said, awesome. I take my phone and as we're switching shooters, I hit the button and the last picture was my daughter in the backyard. And I'm like, wait a minute. I said, Sandra, you didn't get anything. <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> so she, I'm like, man, and I ink balled every one of those. Like I was, oh, I was pumped that I got it on film. And so then my dad got in the box and I, I taped him and then a buddy got in the box. I taped him. Sandra got in there. I got Sandra. I haven't released that video yet. I got Sandra in there. So I said, okay, before we go to the next station, guys came up. I know, I knew, well, I pretty much, I knew almost everybody there fairly well. And so I was, I, I know I was talking to them and chirping. I thought they're not going to care a whole lot. They, they know who I am and you either hate me or you love me. And if they already hate me, great. And then this isn't going to matter. And if they love me, well, then they won't care. So really I, I'm going to do this. So I, I said, Sandra, here's my phone. Hit this red button. <laughs> yeah. I just throw me two more just so I can ink ball these because it is my favorite. So that's, that was the two you got to see, but I absolutely oh, swear nice. I smashed all 10. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, and then, it's yeah, really the, what I believe. The other video, I, I just posted, I posted Dad yesterday, and then I posted the other guy uh, to, today, and he was actually in the squad behind us. I hung around as my squad went on. I hung around and taped him, and I knew him, Jason, and uh, good dude. And so I, I taped him over the shoulder. And, yeah, these targets coming in, and yeah. if you don't boil them, pieces are going to hit you. I mean, you got it. You got to, or it's like when the target attacks, it's the cooler. One guy was going like, yeah, we got to change that station because someone's going to get, I'm like, no, Don't that's, change it. That's yeah, awesome. that's the, the yeah. best part. But I was, I had, as I'm walking to catch up to my squad, I had pieces of target dripping, dropping down inside my shirt and down to my pants yeah. that's, <laughs> uh, from standing by advertisement for, uh, for a set of good set of safety glasses for sure. Oh, when yeah, you, when yeah, you yeah, hit yeah. those targets, it was nothing but dust. Well, and it was that or get hit by the pieces. Yeah. Right? And so it was, yeah, smoke them or, or don't, except for dad. Dad, I couldn't. I was trying to tell dad, wait, wait until they come right off your barrel. And he's like, I got no pattern. I know that's the cool part. Yeah. <laughs> but I couldn't get him to now do it. Did, your dad did pretty good too. Oh, he, yeah, he inked all 10. Fun, looked like he, a lot of fun. Yeah, he inked all 10. Oh, no. it's an absolute blast. I, I, and so I said I would give an update, actually, if I could go on a little bit of a tangent. And because I used my trap gun and I'll say I concentrated a little bit more. This time, it's still not competition concentration. I mean, come on, I'm still out there having fun. I just, I can't help yeah. it. And everybody like that, that's, that's my gig. I love the social side of that, but I shot an 89 out of a hundred. And I, I think I could still pick up some targets because I, the rabbits killed me right at the first station. I mean, I missed four right there and which, ah, and so I, I know I could have done better, but with my trap gun. And that's why I was going to say 
pick a gun, learn where it shoots, turn the brain off and just know where the target's got to be in relation to that bead. Let your brain, your brain is established that sight picture. It will take care of it for you. And that was to me, that was proof in the pudding right there. Being able to shoot an 89 with my trap gun that shoots like 120% high. Yeah. That's, that's knowing your, your gun and making it happen, which is awesome. Well, and, and it wasn't work. Like it wasn't like I no, was having a contest. Like and I working. think if I switch to my sporting gun that shoots 60, 40, it, because I, I never shoot the thing, I would have to work. And I don't yeah. think my score would be as good. This, I just, I didn't think about it. I just boom. And they, they exploded. And it didn't matter if it was an income or a cross. Or, it sounds like I'm bragging. And I'm not, uh, uh, forgive me. I mean, my personality is such that I absolutely would, but I, um, it, it was just the fact that I could not believe it just let my brain turn off and smoke targets it, and that gun shooting 120 high and still smoke targets. I loved it. It was absolutely, and, and I loved that gun. So to me, screw it. I'm using that. And, and we're, we're going back this Sunday. Nice. Nice. Uh, one of these times I'm going to have to get, uh, get up there and put some lead in the air and see if I can break 50 oh, or something. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> if you were going North then, uh, yeah, absolutely get down here this Sunday, but, but, but there's more, there's another one coming up next month. So we're good. So yeah, so it was a it was awesome. I absolutely love sporting clays. We're going back this this weekend and and going to have a blast. I just picked up some shot today so I can get reloading as we ran out and uh, we'll have enough for practice hopefully tomorrow night at the at the trap club and then off to sporting clays on Sunday. So you Sweet. messaged me and said something about coffee. Oh, and so gosh. I didn't get back to you. <laughs> now I must ask because Bill. I've only ever talked to you about tea and wine. And that's the, that's the bill, Tom, that I know. (laughs) So so what's up with coffee? Well, uh, you know how I like to do things and do things right. And I'm a, I'm a very spoiled uh, guy at home. My wife, when she's home, she, she's top shelf, takes care of me uh, every step of the way. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Did Candace start listening to these podcasts? No, but I'm thinking she might. Now. So <laughs> I, I wanted to there's, pump it up the best as you, I could. You want a gun or something? Something's coming down the pipe. <laughs> <Yeah. you. laughs> well, I, I'll tell you what I want. Uh, so the, this morning I get up, you know, I'm having to get all my stuff ready because my, my wife, bless her, she she it gets my lunch ready. She makes the my coffee in the morning, the breakfast. And she gets gets it all ready, and I literally walk out the door with a, a armful of stuff and. Uh, I'm off to go. Well, this morning I'm doing it all myself, right? So I thought ahead because that's what I do. And I, I get my lunch partially ready last night and I heat up my, my stuff this morning and, and I go to make the coffee this morning. And you know what? I've made coffee before I thought, but I make it for like a pot of coffee for, for all of us. And I've got uh, I've got an old Tim Hortons coffee maker that I won in a roll up the rim contest many 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 hey, years ago. Hey, now that's Canadian right there. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> it's a Tim Hortons bun coffee maker that I won at roll up the rim. Come on, you can't get more Canadian than that that's on right. Canada Day. On even. Canada Day to mention so, Tim Hortons Canadian. That's awesome. Okay, sorry. Yeah. carry on. So I like my coffee a little bit stronger when my wife's not around because uh, she doesn't like it as strong. I like to put a few more scoops in. And well. Apparently this morning, I decided to put a whole lot more scoops in with a whole lot less water because when I'm making coffee for one, I don't need a full pot. So <laughs> did, the, did the Tim Hortons coffee maker clog up? <laughs> well, it didn't the go at first. I'm thinking, well, maybe this isn't too bad. So I went and jumped in the shower and I came, came out of the shower and I thought, oh, okay, the coffee pot's got coffee in it. We're good to go. I poured it in the cup, the travel mug jumped in the car and hit the road. I get about halfway to work to take the first sip. And I'm like, <laughs> I have never made tar. <laughs> taste like, it was talking horrible. like a pirate. It burns your throat going down. <laughs> it was horrible. The worst stuff I've ever, ever made. So what, what do I do? What do you think I did? You pulled over, I, whipped out your tea bag, <laughs> threw your <laughs> hot water. <laughs> I had the hot water in my lunch bag and no tea bags. That's that they're at work. So anyway, so what I did, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay bill i can edit that yeah. out and you can keep your man card <laughs> yeah <laughs> what i did is i got to work and i googled how to make the perfect cup of coffee i've done this in the last week or so i because i've been i didn't want to share it yet but i've been experimenting too so carry on and so and I, 
16 to 1. So I figured out the right ratio of, of water, but then they measured it in grams. So I, I had this whole thing this morning when I got to work <laughs> for the first 20 minutes, you know, I, after before I checked in and I started checking my, my work emails and stuff. I've now got it figured out because I had to convert grams to ounces to tablespoons, and I've got it out that tomorrow morning I'm going to try five tablespoons of coffee to 36 ounces of water. Okay, how many and cups is that? How many cups? How many cups of water is 36 ounces? I couldn't tell because you. Because I've experimented this because when I, when I started uh, working from home, Right. So I quit doing the Keurig pods because it's yeah. a lot cheaper to buy grain coffee and uh, drink it so much. And I'm going through coffee pods like crazy. And so Jen's like, what? How many cups of coffee are you drinking a day? I, don't know, I get bored. I go up and make a cup. <laughs> it's, so I, I now do. And I, so my dad was like, oh, how, how, how much? How many cups? So half a pot of my and my coffee maker is like six cups of water six and a half my parents brought over the coffee i didn't have a coffee maker they brought it over but six six and a half cups it says on the side my dad initially put 12 scoops which is is almost equivalent to 12 tablespoons and it was freaking strong as crap so i've now i've been playing and i have landed Mm -hmm. on a one-to-one tablespoon to cup so if i'm doing six cups I do six scoops, six tablespoons. And I learned, and I, I read today about why it makes it uh, bitter because it doesn't have a chance to get all the coffee out of the bean. And, and I, I did a lot of reading today this morning <laughs> like on what a, makes a perfect cup all, of coffee. All star, we need to turn this podcast into a coffee making <laughs> yeah. pot. This is awesome. You've gone to that no. level of detail. Yeah. Uh, that's just me, though. I, I, the almost I guy know. almost made a good cup of coffee this morning. <laughs> he <laughs> so, almost didn't drink tea. <laughs> yeah. But now, now tomorrow morning we're going to go for for the the new ratio, and we'll see if we can get this. Oh, uh, you're not going to sleep tonight. <laughs> no, I'm all wired up now. I've been wired up all day for some reason. I can't figure out why. If it, if it ain't the caffeine, it's the anticipation of a good cup of coffee. I, I actually I set up the machine before the podcast for tomorrow morning, just <laughs> with water on the side. I'm ready to go. I, I'm anxious. No, to try I'm this so team. not that guy. <laughs> yeah, well. See, that's just my character. Yeah, sorry, going a little bit of a. No, it's all good. This is what happens when uh, you're a bachelor and your wife does so much for you. You can't even make a cup of coffee, right? Apparently, so (laughs) it's. I see, and I was going the other way where you're just a tea drinker, and you decided to try to step into manhood on your own. (laughs) Yeah, I drink coffee. Oh, yeah, don't put cream awesome. and sugar See, in my and coffee I've even either, said there, Mr. Miller. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you got me there. I do. <laughs> yeah. I, I try to do. Dupl- it took me forever to duplicate that double double, but I think I got it. It's the eighteen yeah. percent table cream, and you got to put it in before the coffee so you don't burn it. it. That's that's my googling. But I said to Jen the other day, I've been watching Facebook Marketplace because I want one of them cool coffee makers with the frothy thingamajiggy that's on there. And so, wow. Can I'm, you say I'm, that a little bit louder? I, the, <laughs> hey, that's manly. It's a thingamajiggy. <laughs> yeah. <got it. laughs> but I, yeah, I do. I want to try whatever the heck that's. I don't even know what it's called. I just look it up. Coffee it's machine. called a frother. And if it has it that keep. steel tube off to the side, looks like a primer feeder for your reloader. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. down. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> Supercharged by coffee. That's it. So, so anyway. There there's, there's my little story. So, oh, that's awesome. We got a. Uh, Special guest on. I am so excited. I maybe, I maybe not. I don't know because, yeah, when you messaged me and said he's in, I'm like, yes. And then I got thinking, wait a minute, that means there's two of them. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So it either means I can get to make fun of two of them, or it's four fists, and I don't know which way I want to take this. We'll we'll have to see how it goes. Wait, does he drink tea? Don't answer that. I'm going to ask him. (laughs) <laughs> so yeah, so yeah. your brother's coming on. We're going to talk some deer hunting with your brother. And we are. And wherever else it goes, right? That's it. Oh, I'm pumped. All right, let's get him on the horn. Can you hear me? Have we got everybody? Hello, Bill is still here. Bill, you still here? Good evening, yes. All right. Up, Hello, all. We have, ladies and gentlemen, I'm a little bit nervous. We got two Toms on the phone. But it ain't their first name. That's it. We get uh, a special guest this evening. It's uh, 
Long time listener, eh? Right from the beginning. <laughs> Are you serious? I have listened to every single podcast every single week. I'm not sure great. if your TV is broken or <laughs> you just don't have a whole lot going on in your life. <laughs> we can, we need to work on this. <laughs> that is awesome. I appreciate a, hearing a lot of, I spent a lot of time in my vehicle for work, and I tell you, Every week, I'm looking forward to another new podcast. And looking for, are you serious? I see. I'm, I'm, I'm grinning right now. I can tell you, I've been uh, promoting this to my friends. My friends started listening to you, and uh, we've really appreciated the info and insight and laughs that you guys have provided. It's been great. <laughs> it's to me, it's it's mostly about the laughs, <laughs> which you know, <laughs> that's that that's my my number one the uh, concern because like I, we've always said. When we started this, Bill, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but we're we're really doing this as a selfish thing for us because it's like our out. We get to seclude and talk hunting, shoot and catch up and have fun and we record it and put it out there and, and hopefully it's well received and because it's how we learn to hunt. So why not put it out there? But really, at the end, when we hang up the phones, even if we had a bad day, we're grinning still. Right. And so Absolutely. it's yeah. become like a selfish thing for us that, you know what? I don't care if nobody's listening, <laughs> we're going to do it because at the end we hang up and we're grinning and smiling and having a good day. And it sets us up for messaging for the rest of the week. And, uh, I just had a, we do, we do appreciate that people listen. Oh yeah. 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 Don't get me wrong there. <laughs> don't. Yeah. No, 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 no. I love it. We get to see the stats of, of people listening, but you always wonder how, real those stats are right like yeah how do they know how many downloads and apparently they do but i i get these emailed to me and i look them up on the dashboard how many people listen on apple Podcasts, how many listen on spotify how many have downloaded it and and i'm like i don't believe those numbers <laughs> so i'm a little leery on it hearing you that that you've listened to it and you've actually didn't do that out of the fact that you had to because it's your brother <laughs> <laughs> now, if I'm putting words in your mouth, correct me. But I was going to say, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of truth in that. I, I do it out of my own goodness, but hey, I'm going to support my brother too. So I'll give you guys that. But I promise you, we, we listen every week. And, and I like I said, I got a couple of buddies that started listening to it. And, uh, and it's been a fantastic experience for, for all of us. So thank so you for, awesome for what you guys do. Oh, no, gosh, no. Thank you for listening. I love it. That is awesome. I'm like grinning now. I'm like all shy and blushing and that doesn't happen. I don't know what to say. Bill, right. you got to take it over. <laughs> enough, of, enough of that. I want to hear. <laughs> Virtual hugs. I'm hugging my monitor right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we, uh, we wanted to get you on here to talk about a couple of things. And I'm sure Todd will take, uh, take it from one direction, but. No, oh, we're you know fixing, we're fixing for this one to be a good, cause I, not only do I want to hear about, because Bill's kind of shared your story. If you listen, you know, Bill shared your story about shooting, shooting some deer and shooting a big buck. And, but I, yep. I again, I want to know, and we'll get there. I'm going to hijack it a little bit. Cause I want to know the insight of the Tom family hunting that Bill hasn't shared with us yet, but, but we'll <laughs> get there first. Let's make it about your, your, you and your hunting. And, and, and yeah, Bill, if you want to ask the questions first, but I'm afraid no, that's it. you yeah. already know everything. Everything. So you might just bypass questions that I'm thinking. Like, yeah. w when did you start? I know Bill started a long, long time ago. Did you start right with Bill? Was it later on? Was it kind of coming up as kids? Like, how did you get into hunting, shooting, fishing, all of this, this lifestyle? I guess. So, yeah. Well, we, uh, you know, I, I'm originally from Niagara. That's where I grew up. I know. You know, we have the family uh, farm up up in the eastern area of Ontario there, and summer times were usually spent on the farm. And as a kid, you know, we used to take the 22 or the pellet gun and go out and, you know, plink off some rounds. And that right from the get-go was always my excitement. And then I remember, you know, dad would leave, you know, usually in November, go for a hunt. You know, when I was young, I didn't really know much about it. And as I got a little bit older, I got more interested in it and wanted to get to the experience of, you know, what that camaraderie of the hunting trip was and, you know, tried to learn and, and learn from Bill and, and my father. And, and that was kind of the, the beginning for me. And, you know, once I, I got into it, I guess I was probably in high school, 16, 17, when I got to go on my first hunt trip with the family, took a half a week off school. And I was basically hooked from, from the get go. Yeah. I was into and it. And whether right, you right wanted to hunt there. or not, it's a half week off school. Yeah. You're going. <laughs> like, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> screw that crap. I'm out the door hunting. Yeah. I don't care if I'm doing dishes at home, I'm on my way. <laughs> Exactly. Sit in the bush and be cold. I don't care. Not cool. It was great. <laughs> That's right. Right on. So right from the get go. So then it was, it, was it just the deer hunting thing? Like one week rifle season 
at, at first. That that is yeah, that is how how my my hunting career, as we're going to call it, I guess, started. Was the started out as a half week during the rifle season, um, you know, and I would go every year, you know, get the the experience. And for me, you know, hunting was sure being in the bush, but it was also a family time. You know, we got to go and spend a lot of time with my dad, my brother, learn from them because. You know, they, they got a wealth of knowledge and, and I didn't, and, and I still admit that I don't, but it's, uh, that was it for me it is going. And it's only pretty much been deer season. Um, I've been turkey hunting with my brother twice. I'd love to get into it more. And again, here I'm throwing back to your, your podcast, listening to you guys talk about the turkey hunting is, you know, getting, get the itch going for me. That's for sure. So <laughs> that's awesome. Just, I, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, you're almost going to go turkey hunting. Well, I was just going to say we had we had some pretty good turkey hunt uh, opportunities, and and they were definitely almost hunts, almost shots. You you remember that one time we went turkey hunting with the, uh, and that turkey ran across the pond to get to us. Uh, when we were at the, the hunt camp, uh, I do remember sitting underneath a tree, and that I I, I, I vaguely remember Bill. There was a, so there was a spot that we went to in the Niagara, in Niagara region. Actually, we went to okay. went to a spot at, uh, close to the underneath the hydro hydro cut where I had permission to hunt south of the hydro cut, and we were sitting in this this bush and we could hear turkeys gobbling right in front of us, and th- this bird was going off, and I thought, here we are going to get an opportunity to, to hunt and shoot a bird. My brother's first time first time on turkey hunting, and I'm sitting there. And all of a sudden, to the right of me, there's there's no way this bird's coming because it, it's a flooded bit of timber yeah. that's behind me. I've had and those thoughts. Uh, okay, first off, I've never heard this story before. I'm surprised you held us out on me, but I'm well, glad you're bringing waiting, it up with your brother. This is yeah, yeah, this is awesome. And then number two, so, I've had that where you're sitting and you got swamp behind you because you're assuming they're going to come out in front, and then you hear them behind you, and you're like, man. They ain't coming that, through this swamp. Ran through the water and saw us, uh, saw us sitting there, and then turned around and, and, and just booked it away. And that was shortly thereafter. Before that was when that deer came within ten yards. That's what I remember from that hunt: is that deer walking ten yards into us, standing there looking at us, not knowing what was going on, and we were sitting as still as can be, and then it taking off and getting all mad and stomping and snorting yeah. you know, 50 <laughs> yards away from us after we got busted. Yeah. So Todd, I, was... I got to tell you from my perspective, that was my first Turkey hunt. And as somebody who's never been in the bush Turkey hunting at that point, when my brother started to call and they started calling back, that was one of the coolest experiences I think I've ever had. That in will the bush. light you up, right? Like that's the hook factor right there. That's what, and Bill, you alluded to that last time we were talking about the turkey hunting is of, of all the different hunt hunting types you can do. Turkey is the one that is for, even for kids to get them hooked because it's so interactive, right? Yeah. You could have a deer at 50 yards and you, you wouldn't know it, but you got a turkey at 50 yards. You're going to know it. Yeah. And yeah, and that, that's, that's, that's I awesome. absolutely agree with that. I mean, even at the hunt camp, when you and I hunted sat underneath that pine tree there and that, that Turkey came gobbling its head off. We never saw it, but it just about crested the hill. I, that was another almost hunt that I thought you were going to get a bird <laughs> that day too, right? Absolutely. That, that was one that I, I was shocked that we didn't see the bird because we could hear it coming and coming and coming. And we just, we couldn't understand how it wasn't right in front of us by the time that, uh, you know, I guess it decided to turn around and go the other way. So you guys have had that many close encounters, but yet hasn't come in into range. I told you I am the only <laughs> I guy know, but I just can't believe like you call, you get the gobbles, they start coming. And I don't think turkeys can smell. Like I never worry about, you know, washing my clothes and scent free, putting my ozonics out. But I'm starting to wonder if the turkeys up your area, they don't have a <laughs> yeah. nose. I'm just, yeah. I'm just starting to because yeah like how do you get them i'm impressed i am impressed the almost guy is really really driving home but yeah wow isn't that something yeah that's it uh, right on so you're, uh, yeah the deer hunt he's he's had some success though i tell you that for sure yeah I've, so uh, so I've you did a bit of turkey hunting every aspect but yeah so yeah. now but your primary like deer hunting that's right. Correct. Like, so Absolutely. my, my start was 
Well, I did the deer thing and back, it must've been like an age thing or something. There wasn't, I, I didn't know anybody that really bow hunted when I was younger, right when in my teens, my dad, it was one week of, of deer, but he was a waterfowl guy. So my first hunting experiences were that I would go in for the week of deer hunting and, and hang out with him and it'd be boring and cold and everything else. And yada, 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 yada. And, uh, so I would do that. That was my, then I'd get to go rabbit hunting every now and then, but he was a huge waterfowler hunting hunter. And so that for us is, is still our number one, but for you guys, it's like deer is your number one, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's absolutely. True. So, yeah. And so do you both bow hunt? I, I do bow hunt. Yes. And I know that you have not as much, uh, fun with crossbows, but <laughs> I'm a crossbow hunter myself. Is that your prelude for me to make, to try not to make fun of you? I apologize. Oh, you can make fun of me all you want. <laughs> no, I, you're Bill's brother. That's, I, that's all I have to say. <laughs> fair enough fair, yeah fair enough we won't even get into if you drink tea or coffee i don't i don't even i'm not even gonna go down that road okay so so you predominantly are a deer hunter and had success and so i've been cutting you off i am gonna shut up because i do bill has alluded to the the story i want to from your standpoint best deer favorite deer hunt Ever. Can you take us like from beginning to end? And then I'm probably going to hijack it and, and, and discuss more of, of the Toms. <laughs> That's not a problem. I, I can tell you that um, favorite deer hunt and best deer hunt might not be the same story, but I will talk about this past season being as the most uh, memorable uh, to date. I, I would say that in the years that I've been hunting, um, there has not been a single year that I can think of where I have not at least seen a deer, let alone had a potential sh chance to harvest a deer. And similar to, I guess, my brother being an almost guy, I've been almost <laughs> close to get the wall hanger many times where I've seen them but not had a shot or I've had the unfortunate uh, miss, you know, because I get that buck fever going in me. Um, but I, I have shot my fair share of, of decent sized deer but this year was was the, the icing on the cake uh, we uh we had a long conversation going into it that you know this was the year everybody thought would be my year to be successful and i went into it thinking if it's the, the case i'm happy for it if not well a successful hunt for me is just being in the bush so we uh so we do you have did you have that conversation as a family does that we, happen we, we prior have, to hunt camp? Like, you know, it's, 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 it's your year this year. We don't, we, it's not necessarily, Hey, that the tag is yours. It's just, you know, gut feeling, you know, this is the year that you're, you're going to be, you know, the one to get, you know, the deer, we'll call it the, the, the one that everybody's talking about, yep. so to speak yep. to, to us as a family, anybody who's successful, we're all successful. That that's yeah. a successful hunt for us. We, we don't look at, at tags as a, as a number per se, we look at, you know, the hunt as a group, as a successful hunt, anybody who's able to harvest, we were all happy for that, that hunter. And that's the way we look at it. So that's absolutely the, awesome. The mindset yeah. was, yeah, the mindset for us was strictly, Hey, you know, I think this is the year that you're going to have the year that we're going to be talking about. And, you know, skipping ahead to the end of the story, it was, and I was fortunate. <laughs> spoiler alert. Into it. Yeah, yeah, spoiler alert, absolutely. But but honestly, going into it, we all, you know, we, we went into it saying, but, you know, let's be patient. Let's see. Well, what you know, I was just going to say that. Present. We we talk uh, uh, as a camp, you know, and um, we we hunt as, as, as the, kind of the, with the alliance where we have my, myself, my dad, my brother, and a friend TJ that kind of hunt the, the tags together. And my, my wife, Candace, when she comes up and we do a, a little draw system where, uh, you know, just to keep it fair, because we don't all get doe tags. I'm not sure how it is down in, in St. Thomas way. If everybody in here you oh, know, yeah. gets a doe tag. Pretty much. But well, yeah. Up, yeah. Well, we all get, up. we all get our buck tag, right? Yeah, and for sure. But it, most years it, we get an additional, if not more doe tags. See, for, for us, I mean, you go into a draw and you get a, a doe tag. Um, everybody's got a buck tag, obviously, but the, the doe tags, um, we don't get one per person necessarily because that's just the way the draw works out. If all five of us go into the draw together, uh, applying for our area as their first choice, we may get three 
tags, Jay, I guess that would be a loss for, for our, our group, right? Yeah, I would agree with that. And then, you know, just to keep it fair as to see whose tag goes on first, because we don't necessarily always shoot every tag either. We, we went to a little draw system where, you know, uh, if my name was drawn first and I have a doe tag, my tag goes on that animal and we're all, it's fair. But you know what? We don't say, hey, you shot a, a deer last year, so you're not shooting one this year. It, it's it's very much the honor system, and we're all in it for the reason my brother just said, to be in the bush, to enjoy the hunt, to get a little bit of meat for the freezer if the opportunity exists. Yep. And this year we had a conversation, and I won't hijack the story too much, but that, you know what, the first day, let, let's be selective, right? We got tags. We, we are uh, very, very fortunate that we typically have an opportunity to harvest a doe if that opportunity comes up but because we're all looking for wanting and hoping that that jay has a good chance and we all want to see if maybe there's a buck roaming around because we got trail cameras out there and we're seeing pictures of that 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 that, uh big bucks or a couple big bucks on camera Let's give it a day or so and see see what the forest wants. So you us, actually right? do that, you guys. So it, that's it definitely one up on us, right? So it, 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 to give insight into us, we're the same. We're absolutely elated no matter who's going to shoot a deer because that's just we're pumped, right? We know what it means to us. So if my dad shoots one or my buddy Scott shoots one, we're even more. And what's even better is if, you know, last year, maybe we tagged out and dad didn't shoot one. It'd be, it, we tagged out too quick. Then this year he shoots one. Then we're even more pumped, right? Because now the person yeah. that didn't shoot one last year, so yada yada yada. But we never, never, ever, ever do we say let's let's be a little selective this year. Let's let some walk, man. If it's as long as it's not little, and we don't want to shoot like little fawns. But if it's brown, man, it's down. And if you let one pass, you are don't let anybody know. <laughs> <laughs> so you yeah. guys actually said that you said this year. You know what? Let's be let's be selective on the first day. Well, I can yeah. tell you that it wasn't even just the first day. We we generally get up there uh, either Friday night prior to rifle season opening or Saturday morning. We generally will put a bow hunt in Saturday and Sunday. And again, if opportunity presents itself, we kind of say, Hey, you know, obviously if it's, if it's worth taking the shot, you know, if you're confident in your shot and you know, it's a, it's an ethical shot, take it. But again, don't be afraid to, to pass on something that comes up. So we, we had the ability this year with the knowledge that, Hey, we've seen deer every year. We have a good, um, good mindset that, Hey, we're going to have an opportunity at some point throughout the week let's be a little choosy for a day or two and kind of see what happens in the bush around us. And I can say that that first two days with during the bow hunt, I think each one of us saw deer. We, yeah. we had deer come out to us. I had, I know on the, the Saturday and the Sunday, I had a couple of different deer come out to me that, you know, were in that middle, you know, to smaller range that I was able to say, you know what, today's not the day. You know, I, I'm going to take my chances Maybe, you know, if it gets towards the end of the week, you're definitely uh, a shooter if, you know, it gets to the point where we have nothing on the pole. But today I'm going to I'm going to pass and, and let you, you know, enjoy the experience and just watch the deer around me. Man, and that's, that's what I think all of us did. That's cojones. And when it comes to and but I guess with two days beforehand with a bow, I'm, I'm with you. We do that in the bow, me, but it's not my father. It's me and Scotty. My dad doesn't do a, a whole lot of bow hunting. So we will pass them up and and. And we'll pass a lot up in boat, but we don't hunt the same woods for black powder, like our one yeah, week of rifle that we do too. for bow. So when we hit that woods, we got no trail cameras. It's it's on. And because there's been some years way back in the back that it's been tough. And so with my dad, you don't take that chance, man. If it's brown, it is down. So I got to give you props that you guys are traveling this far. You've got the week off and you're passing up deer because my, I'm not sure my family would do that, but that's awesome. <laughs> that is, uh, and yeah. and I, I can say in all honesty that there has been de- years where we have taken, you know, the chance passed on a deer on Monday and got skunked the rest of the and week. It, and that's just bit, the yeah. chance that we take. Yeah. That's deer but, hunting. But that was our, <laughs> That was our mindset going in this year was that, Hey, let's, let's be a little bit patient, you know, let the, the bush kind of come around us this year. Let's take a day, 
or two and kind of see what happens. Again, knowing that, you know, there is a, a fair amount of deer up where we hunt and we're regularly successful, at least in seeing deer that we thought that, Hey, let's, let's be sure that if we're taking something, it's, it's worth taking this year. And, uh, and that was our mindset. And coming into, into the rifle on Monday, you know, we'd seen some deer. I actually had a very decent sized buck come out to me the, the night prior, but was just out of range for my bow. And, uh, and I was hoping and anticipating seeing this one again. And sure enough for the rest of the week, that was how I was going to set up. This is where he came out. So, you know, that's where he's going to come out. And as I'm sure you guys all know, no matter what you do, they never come where you expect them to. <laughs> no. And and sure enough, Monday rolls around and I had two or three uh, deer come out. And again, our ethics are we won't ever shoot a doe if she's got young deer with her, a couple of fawns. And yeah. Monday I had a doe and a couple of fawns come out. She was a really good sized doe, but there was no way was I even going to think about it. So fawns still with her. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we we passed on. I passed on that. I know that uh, that Bill and, and TJ and I believe even my dad all saw deer on that Monday, and we all took the the chance and we all decided pass. We all said let's let's wait because we again, as Bill said, we have our trail cameras up. We know there's some big deer in the area, and we were just kind of letting things happen around us. Um, in previous years, you know, you hear the opening morning in World War II sounds like it's going on in all the camps around you. So you know, we kind of decided, hey, let's just be quiet and see what happens. Okay. And Monday so, night, sure enough, we got nothing hanging. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody, everybody took a pass, but you all saw deer. Yeah, so you had the confidence that they're there, which I'm going to still yeah. say that's like the deer hunting cojones right there is to pass one up when you got a week <laughs> of hunting. That's just, that I'm, I'm impressed. So before yeah. we get to the, the actual hunt of, of the success, can you give me the dynamics of the hunt camp? You roll in Friday. How do you decide who's going to sit where, in what stand, at what time? <laughs> and how does all that go? Like, is it like a Tom battle? Like, do you guys no. throw down? Is it? it? It's actually very, very simple for us. The The section of bush that, that uh, I have been successful in is the same place that I have been sitting in probably for 10 plus years. So that's your and spot I'm being complete. That that's kind of my spot. But if I'm being honest, I stole that from my dad. One of the first couple of years that I got up there, he mm-hmm. kind of mm-hmm. put me into a place that he was successful in and said, Hey, why don't you go sit there? And he was going to sit in a different area. And then, you know, I kind of over the years have really learned that section of Bush, you know, like the back of my hand, I kind of have a good idea of the, the travel patterns. Um, we've all, we've all shot and, deer. We've all yes. shot deer out of that, but the Tom family and the Alliance uh, has all shot deer out of that bush, that block section of, of, of pines. It's yes. been, you know, there's a year that Jay, uh, you know, we, we did a, a rifle hunt. I still had a tag left. Candace and I went for a muzzleloader hunt and, and I shot a, a doe during the, the muzzleloader season. So that, that bush has been very, very productive. That that yes. block section of bush. So you've almost got the honey hole right there. That um, is, but you know what? It, it, it is it's one of us. So. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, each one of us I, has a has a little honey hole. See, and hole. well, we have that in common, Jay. So I I stole my dad's because I went my first four years of actually being able to to hunt, like actually have a gun in my hand without seeing a deer or anything, and my dad with me, and so I've got dad had me in his, and I'm using air quotes, but a honey hole right where he's always shot deer. And the first four years was a pain. But then once we, we broke that, uh, broke the ice, I'll say. And I actually finally shot one in that spot. I've not left that spot. And now that (laughs) is, and I feel so bad every year that before season, I ask anybody want my spot? Anybody want to, and I call it my spot, but honestly, it was my dad's first, right? Like that was, sure. that was dad's spot and uh, no, no, you take it, but there's years I'll shoot four on opening day because it's the spot. And so I'm lucky, I'm fortunate to have it. Nobody ever wants to take it, but I offer it up. I want to go on record well, and say that, but I'm the same <laughs> as you. I got my father's old spot, which would, everybody would say is probably the best spot of all of the, I don't know, we got like 18 tree stands down from concession to concession, but that one 
is the spot, especially on opening morning when nobody's hunted this bush. And so I, I always offer it up. So yeah, so no, we're, we're liking that in that way. Okay. So, so sure. you guys I, all I have your say, sex I'm, spot. I'm, I'm very superstitious in the sense that, you know, I pretty much don't scout too many other areas of the bush, but as Bill was saying, we all have our own kind of areas within the, uh, the property that we hunt that we all kind of focus on. And at no point in time is it ever my spot every morning. It's where are you going to go? I'm going to go back to my spot. Where are you going to go? I'm going to go back to my spot. And then maybe by Wednesday, if there's been no action, Hey, do you want to change a pace? Maybe see a different section of bush for a morning just to change your sight lines. You know, we'll offer that up. But again, I don't think there's a respect thing in our camp amongst, amongst us is you put the work into that area by putting the camera up, putting the stand up, maybe putting a little bit of, uh, a feed up or whatever, whatever it is. And you know what? You put the effort in, you take it until you're, you, you want to give it up. <laughs> I'd <laughs> be know, like, my, my Hey, spot. uh, how many salt licks did you put down there? Did you, okay, well, I'm yeah. going to take that spot. I think I appreciate all your hard work through the summer. <laughs> well, yes. Todd, if, if you've seen my brother's, uh, hotel that he sits in, yeah, like right. You, you I, could understand why some people would be jealous. Of I'd be a, having a hard time. Spot, so I'm with you. I'd be having a hard time going to any other spot than the Taj Mahal of Tom. Absolutely. <laughs> the, Absolutely. the heater. The, the he's up, Mahal, yeah. It's like a freaking cottage. I'm surprised that he comes back to what you call camp. He just doesn't stay there in that little shanty for the, for the week. I, I feel like we've had that conversation where, Hey, if I just bring my sleeping bag, I might be able to sleep out here for the night. <laughs> <laughs> I totally believe it. I have seen, the pictures and i'm like that's not hunting like my wife won't yeah. let me buy a, a hard sided trailer we have a pop-up and i'm like we need to just buy you know how much easier it would be you know you're done work friday we drive we hook i gotta hook up the trailer we get to the campsite that's like what 40 minutes away whatever it is now i've got to level it i've got to crank it up i gotta slide out the beds we gotta get all the stuff inside situated if we had a hard sided trailer you just hook it up and go but that's not camping that's glamping. So I, yeah, I'm with you. I don't know what Bill's doing. That ain't hunting. <laughs> I gave up my spot this year. Yes. Yes, you did. And I shot a deer that night in another spot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that, that's the exact reason why we say that bush walking or deer walk in the bush. You know, you just got to be in the bush to be able to shoot a deer. It doesn't matter where you're sitting, where you're standing. So that's why we don't really have a, you know, a designated, this is my area. It's just your area is in the bush. And if you're going to be there, I'll go somewhere else. That's, yeah. that's the way our camp is. There's yeah. no, no animosity towards any of that, which, which is again, another reason why we you know do so well and, and enjoy that part of it. So. No, I agree. We, that's we, hunting with family and friends, right? Like that's what it's yeah. all about. You want to be related no matter what. We get, we get a lot of joy from each other's success too. And I know you do too, in your group yeah, too, Todd. Absolutely. You alluded to that too. That if my brother shoots something, man, oh man, I want to be the first one down there to help him track or drag or whatever it takes. Yep. To, and, and that's the same with anybody in the camp. Oh, absolutely. You know, it, yeah. And, and, and that's, there. that's the point of hunting with friends and family, right? Where you're not just joining a hunt camp that, you know, nobody, and no, you get that kind of selfish side. I've heard guys tell me that, and I, I couldn't relate. I don't know. I don't know what they're talking about, right? Well, I joined this hunt camp, but everybody was a jerk. And I'm like, what? I've never heard of that before because I've only hunted with family and friends. And to be honest, I want my dad to shoot one first so that it can take the pressure off me. There's more pressure on me if dad, if we're, if we're into Wednesday and we got one tag left and dad hasn't shot one, I know what that feels like. And so I, I'd rather have that, pre- dad, you shoot one first. I want him to do it. So now I can relax and I can focus on me. Right. And so, cause I'm so focused on, and that's the whole camp. I know Scotty's the same. Scotty wants dad to get one or dad's buddy, Bob as well. Like Bob's such the nicest guy you want him. I'm afraid that when, when they walk out in front of Bob, he'd rather look at him than shoot him a lot of times because he just likes to be in the woods, but that's how we all are. And I, yeah, I'm, I'm totally with you. Totally relate. And which I love. And that really what I'm liking right now is anybody listening to this, that is hunting. And I don't even yeah. care if you shoot one, if you see one, if you're able to pass one up, it's, it's that attitude that when you go back to the hunt camp at night, you got no remorse because you were thinking of everybody else and you're going to have a good time. And it yeah, just, and absolutely. it makes everybody in back, a better mood. And we're back sitting around a table and my dad, my brother and, and TJ are telling stories and stuff. And, and we're just, we're, we're having that good communication and, and chatting and, 
you know, maybe maybe sharing a story. Hey, I rattled it and I got nothing. Hey, I, I called over here and maybe oh, uh, for ten minutes later, something came up. Or hey, I dropped my, uh, <laughs> I dropped, I fell going into my stand and a deer showed up. You, you know, <laughs> we can laugh at each other because that's happened. You know, what I mean? it happens more times than we can count. Where. I've done everything wrong, made more noise going up into my tree stand, and within five minutes, I had three deer walking out. Like it's, <laughs> it's crazy how that kind of thing happens. <laughs> no, agreed. That's awesome. So I, wanna, so I, I did tell your story, but I, yes. I, I got a little bit of grief from you for, for missing a few points, maybe. So is it time to set the record straight? Yeah, what do you always well, do to me, Bill? And now the rest of the story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I will lead into Tuesday morning and say that we had all had the conversation Monday night about our experiences, what we had seen, the few deer that we'd all kind of, that had frequented our spots that day. And there was one deer that was a, a little biker that seemed to have been traveling back and forth between oh, yeah. my brother, myself, and my friend TJ. And we'd all seen him multiple times. And it got to the point where we had the conversation uh, Tuesday morning, first thing before we'd even left the camp, hey, it's Tuesday now, well past. If he comes out, see a shooter. And the decision was yes. Oh, I and love those I conversations. Buddy, that's the that's the awesome <laughs> ones, right? So it's the next day and you're like, okay, I've seen this deer and I let it walk. Are we going to shoot it now? Because me and yeah, Scotty yeah, have that one. We, 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 we literally, yeah, we literally had that guy. I forgot about that. We yeah. had that conversation. Yeah. That's awesome. We, we were standing, getting dressed in the morning, you know, getting ready to head out. Is he a shooter? We see him today, the shooter, yes. I turned to my buddy TJ. I said, I'll see you at 7.30 because I guarantee you're going to put him down by a quarter after 7. Yeah, and that's I, We all, had the exact same conversation with Scott. It's not in the black powder <laughs> when we're bow hunting, right? It's like, Todd, yeah. I've passed up this little six like seven times. I can't do it an eighth. We're, we're four <laughs> days out of black powder season where we're going to use all our tags. What's the difference if I shoot him now or I shoot one in black powder? can I now shoot? It's more, more can I, cause I'm like the, the guy that's like, don't shoot it. Don't shoot it. It's not big enough yet. But yeah. And then, yeah. So, all right. He's a shooter. Now you also said yeah. this was a spike and I will tell you if Scott was with you, it would have died on Monday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we, uh, we had that conversation. We all headed out to the bush. I think we were all kind of in our stand settled at, at around six. Um, I think legal shoot was about six twenty five ish. Don't quote me on that. Um, I think it was about 6.50. We heard the first shot go off, and I started packing my stuff up because I knew it was my buddy T. Sure enough, no doubt. He said he watched that thing come out to him. It was there for a good half an hour, and he said, well, we had the conversation. I waited, you know, made sure nothing was with him, and he put him down. Sure enough. That's At awesome. 10, I'm walking out of my stand to go help him. You know, we, we let Bill know, hey, he's, you know, we don't got to do any tracking. Stay in your spot, I believe, is what we said. Told everybody, you know, deer down, we've got them. You know, no tracking necessary, success. And, and I went over and helped my buddy TJ get them, get them loaded. And, uh, you know, kind of fast forward through the story. We got them all field dressed and everything else. Got back to the camp. It was about 10 o'clock when all was kind of, the commotion was done with me and him. And, uh, and I said to TJ that, uh, hey, I'm going to head back out to the bush for the rest of the day. We usually try to come in for a quick lunch and then head back out. But I said, I'm going to go sit for the rest of the entire day and uh, drop me off. We'll go there. And sure enough, I got out about 1030 and I sat. Whoa. And that's so, a long sit 1030 and you're is. planning on the rest of the day. And you're almost yeah, thinking, planning, I hope something comes we out, are, but about, yeah. <laughs> chances are it you're won't. Right. And I'm going to be there till dark. That is a long, long sit. Oh my gosh. It, like, it's, it's about a seven hour sit. And usually at about three o'clock, if I'm sitting that long, I'm starting to get the happy feet shuffling in my tree stand, you know, <laughs> counting down. I'm usually asleep. <laughs> I have I have this craziness that usually at about four o'clock, the Rocky theme final countdown starts going in my head, and I got an hour left. <laughs> and that's what I start singing every day. Uh, and uh, no so doubt. sure enough, about uh, twenty after three, um, I have a, a small button buck come walking out, and. I had a little food plot about 35, 40 yards from my tree stand at about my 10 o'clock. And this little button buck came over and basically stood there, looked up at me, didn't know what I was. Wind was going the perfect direction for me. And it would take a little bite of food and then it would look up at me and chew. 
and he kept looking at me as if like, like he knew that I was not going to do anything. And I had, I had the gun out. I had it on the rest. I had it pointed in his direction because two nights earlier, the same thing happened when that buck came out to me during the bull hunt. Oh, I see. Right you're, behind where you're he ready came to rock. Out. So I was, I was ready. Okay. I was thinking, okay. Can I pause you there? Of course you can. And so you set a food plot. Did you, you went out and purposely in the spring, summer planted this food plot for deer season? I say food plot because I wasn't going to tell you. I got a pile of apples. I, <laughs> I like to stick out. There. No, no, no. That's, hey, that's all right. It is what it is. I, 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 yeah. It I a, got apples. A plot and food. Food. I was going to say, if yeah, you it, put it, apples down, <laughs> trees typically don't grow, but it will still bring in the deer. It's <laughs> yeah, it, it sure, they sure come in. I can tell you. There's a couple of other little, little things that I, okay, I picked up. So on that let me ask you, because I've never, I've, I've tried this, right. And I always fail at it for whatever reason like bow hunting. I, again, we don't do a, a whole lot of work in our black powder because that, that land is just perfect. So there's not a lot to do and our tree stands are in pinch points, all that fun stuff. So, but in bow, I really put the work in. I have tried to do, you know, I've had guys even tell me pumpkins. So at Halloween, I'm collecting everybody's pumpkins and I'm taking them out and I've never seen a deer and then they get all rotten and moldy. And at some point I'm thinking, man, is that going to scare the deer away? Cause now it's like moldy food sitting on the ground for weeks yeah. at a time. And I've tried, I, I'd never tried the apples. I've never had, uh, I, I've never had the ability to do like, go get now. I've never had the, the gumption, I guess, to go buy a bunch, but I've tried, I got a feeder that is like, it's, it's huge on a, a tripod. You fill it with corn and I, I got some picks early season. And yeah. Like I got some yeah, picks of deer really early season, bother. but now when it's time to hunt bow, Eh, the deer don't care now. And again, we've got, I said this last week on the pocket. You haven't heard it yet. It's going to air uh, this Sunday, but we have ethanol plant close by. So like the corn fields are massive around here. And, and I, I, I'm not a farmer. I don't know if it's because I, but I just know that since ethanol, it seems like a lot of farms are doubling up back to back years with corn. And, and it's just crazy how much corn's around. So maybe that is kind of pulling it aside yeah. too, but you guys are hunting in a in a spot that is crop mecca. Yeah, we're hunting. Yes. we're hunting in a bush. So so if we we went out and put apples down as an example, you don't have to put but a half a dozen apples, and that smell is in the air. Hey, when I go out in the morning, and I, and I don't know if I should be telling everybody this because it's <laughs> it's my top secret. It's your that state secret. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't wait, I, wait, 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 wait. I got because I don't even know this, uh, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I was going to say, should Bill, really be sharing that? Yeah, no, hey, know. hey, I'm in now. Bill's Maybe carry on with the podcast. are about to be unraveled. Okay, go. <laughs> so I don't, I don't typically put a massive pile of, of apples down at a time for, for two reasons. One, I believe that a massive pile of apples, and we're going to hear a contradiction to this in just a couple <laughs> minutes from my brother's talk. You sure are. <laughs> for for my, my, my own personal, personal thing, I put a massive pile of apples down one year at the hunt gate and I put a camera out by it and I got a bear that laid on the apples all night and literally ate every single one. And I never saw a deer. Though. So my, that's, my, that's so awesome. Okay. So yeah. I didn't know you had bear in the area that you're hunting deer, by the way. Either, oh yeah. But that's a whole other I, story. I had bear on camera last year. Big bear. At my spot. Oh yeah. man. So my, my, my secret that, that, I do. I have a big Ziploc bag, the biggest Ziploc bag that you can you can get, not the ones you put clothes in or something, but you know the the big bag. And I and I'll take maybe a half dozen to uh, to a dozen apples, whatever I can chop up with uh, the machete, and I'll cut the apples up and I'll throw it in the bag. And then in that bag, I'll put uh, Wild Game Innovations. And, and again, we're not sponsored by anybody, but I, <laughs> I think it it works for me. So I don't like to deviate with another product apple crush and that apple crush if anybody has ever used the product i don't use a full bag of it i'll use probably a third of a bag over top of the apples just to get the pungent smell of apples in the air and and so that I works have, i have seen and shot more gear out of that recipe and i i'll put that little bag down every time i go out and not to to create the um the habit because I don't I don't want them eating it when I'm there. What's the point? I'll put it there uh, in the morning before legal the shooting time while I'm going on my way into the the stand. Put it out, 
get into my stand, obviously do everything by, by law. And then by the time legal shooting, it's in the air for a good half an hour, 40 minutes. And, and it gets that smell in the air. Okay. So, so uh, this is the, the probably <laughs> honestly, 28 episodes in that could be the most important little piece of tidbit you've ever released. You've not even shared that with me, Bill. And I was trying not to share that (laughs) and it kind of slipped out. So I, I have used and further to that conversation that I said, you know, I've done the squash, I've done, I've done pumpkins and I haven't done apples, but I've done corn in a feeder, you know, firing it out three times a day and all that jazz. And again, we're in a crop heavy area. You're correct. Right. And there's even apple orchards around where we're hunting. We're not hunting in the apple orchard. So maybe that pulls them, but, um, I've done that apple crush. I've done, I, they make a couple different brands, different, different smell and, and flavors and stuff like that, whatever you want to call it. And never had anything like that work. Now, one year uh, that I can remember, I put down Kamir deer and I, where I could park, I could walk into my stand. Normally there would be massive corn and I can't walk directly to my stand. I got to go around it. And I'm very cognizant of that. Right. And I know those are the years that it's a win because there's corn and they're going to walk the edge of the corn to my pitch point. If I can get in quietly and undetected, but I know that it's quite possible they're going to detect me because I got to walk by the bedding area to get to my, cause there's no other way to get there. I'm on the edge of a ravine at a pinch point. I got corn in front of me. I can't come through the corn. And so I, I'm cognizant this year. It was, there was none. There was the, the field. I believe it might've been squash that was in the field. And so I could park and I could walk from the road and not have to go around. I could walk straight to my tree stand. And so I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell dad. I didn't tell my brother-in-law. I didn't tell Scotty. I didn't tell anybody. And I, I went out because it was on my way to work. So I would get in the morning, stop. And it just three days beforehand. So I did it on the, we start hunting on the Monday, the Friday morning on my way to work, I stopped and I walked all the way into my tree stand and just 20 yards from my stand, right in the edge of the field. I put down some Kamir deer. I went back Saturday morning. I put down some Kamir deer. I went back Sunday morning. I put down some Kamir deer. When I went in for that morning hunt on Monday, I put down some Kamir deer. That's the only time I've been that diligent with any kind of product like that. That morning, before it was light, before it was legal, I had a doe walk directly under me. I mean, zero yards. Walk into that corner and stand there feeding. As it started to get light, I'm watching the clock. It's legal. I cock my hammer. Just as I cock my hammer, I hear bark, bark, bark. And I've never heard deer this vocal in my life. And there, I, I, I knew right away there's a buck coming back right where the doe came from, from at the bottom of the ravine. Still fairly dark, but legal. So I did not shoot the doe. Well, she's, still, she's standing right there in the Khmer deer. And this buck comes up five yards and I put it on its shoulder and boom. And it runs under me and goes past me. I look up, smoke everywhere, black powder, doe's gone. I just barely get reloaded. And again, I hear bark, bark, bark. And I can't believe it. I just get reloaded and look, here comes another buck. Put it on the shoulder, kabam! <laughs> and it it runs out into the field and falls over. I just get reloaded again and I hear bark, bark. Here comes another buck. I couldn't, I could not make it up. Comes out and it was maybe at 60 yards. It it just, it came up the ravine and stayed out at 60. Kawam! I smashed it. It ran to join the other buck. Then I had a doe come by, shot her. There's four tags down right there. And this is all within 20 minutes. And the, I'm not kidding you. I, I, I like you ask Scotty or anybody like it's unbelievable. And so I'm now loading. I can't load my gun. I can't get my Ram. This is like, I, 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 tar- I sighted it in and Scotty's like, after you sight it, don't clean it. Just leave it. And you, you know, you can clean it in a couple of days. You shoot it a couple of times, but don't clean it. So I had sighted it in and didn't clean it from that. So now, I don't know how many shots in I am now. I'm normally clean it before this. I can't get my yeah, ramrod down. You can't get another round. I've of, got the ramrod in and I'm using the tree. I'm standing in the tree stand using the tree <laughs> and pounding my ramrod into my gun. While I'm doing this, I hear bark, bark. 
Well, I'm I'm still I can see it now at 80 yards coming through the woods because now it's light now. It's and I can see it. I'm pounding it in. I get it pounded in, and it was a good eight nine pointer. And it's about 70 yards out. It's closer than than one of the deer I'd already shot. And so I'm on the radio, and this I think I've shared this story. I'm going, hey guys, I've got four tags used. Can I use a fifth tag? Can I use a fifth tag? <laughs> like we're about to be done. And I'm everything I get, I'm shaken because this is probably the biggest deer that had come through the biggest buck. Can I use the fifth tag? And nobody got back to me. I watched this buck walk out, look at the edge of the field, see the one laying down dead, turn back around, walk back the way it came, stopped, is rubbing a tree. And then walked away just as it's, it's just going out of sight. And dad finally comes over the radio and goes, did you shoot it? <laughs> like, no, nobody told me my radio's broken. I've been yelling for 10 minutes. Use the tag, but nobody yeah. else would get back to me. And I let it walk away. And that was the only time I've used any kind of supplement like that. And, and I now to be honest, I've used come deer since. And tried to duplicate it, but I hadn't been that diligent where like four days in a row, I would go in and drop it. And then I go back the next day and maybe drop a bit more, but then I wouldn't hunt for a few days. And I come in and like, it's gone with rain, wash it away and never see a deer bow hunting. But that day I could not. And that's when that stand was like coined. That is the hot spot. Like there's no if, yeah, ands, or sure. buts. Like that's where that was opening day. It was unfreaking real, but sorry to hijack the whole deal. But that was <laughs> I, I, the only time I've used any kind of self. I've used that wild game innovations. I used all that jazz. And it, it, the only stuff that did work was come deer. And I honestly don't believe to this day, the come deer had anything to do with it. Other than that doe was probably hot. Like, no, well, three bucks Maybe, on its yeah. tail. No if fans are butts. That doe was hot. And it, she just happened to stop where the Khmer deer was because it is a pinch point. She was probably going to walk by anyway. And she stopped there at that Khmer deer spot. Yeah. And, and so therefore all the bucks now, whether the Khmer deer pulled her in, I don't know. I'm in a high traffic area, but so I, I really, I still to this day, don't say it was the Khmer deer. I just think that it just happened. I would put it down, but I will tell you that was one memorable morning and I did do that. Absolutely. Deer. So, so anyway, sorry, we got Bill's <laughs> top secret apple bag. Now that is awesome. I'm so, I'm going to try it, Bill, in my bow season yeah, this year. I, I'm all over it. And, and so, sorry, Jay. So go on. So you do have, you got apples down. We're going to call it the food plot. <laughs> yeah. You've so got I, a I button buck say- walking and eating and looking. Before I get to that, I will say where Bill and I, we have a couple of different mentalities towards hunting and our food is, is kind of one of those things. He doesn't put out a lot of apples and I'm the exact opposite. I <laughs> You're load the no bushels problem. up and drop them off at this spot, please. <laughs> I, and as much as you're joking, I bought a bin of apples that I put out in October, uh, in and around Thanksgiving in my area. And I think I had on camera seven deer at one point sitting there eating away at them. All seven together and at one time. They were all at See, one See, that's time, like hunting TV show and type and stuff. Like, that's awesome. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. So my, my mentality of that is something like an apple is a treat for them. When they're in a bush and they're eating the pine and they're eating the, you know, the greenery, all of a sudden they get this really sweet oh, yeah. taste. It's like candy. They're going to keep coming back. And when you put that many out my mentality is it saturates into the ground and will continue to be there during the hunt. I might put out a similar size bag to my brothers or something, you know, maybe a little bit bigger, not, not usually as much, but they already know that this is an area where they can get those sweet treats. And when I present that, and I'm similar to, to my brother where we'll, you know, crush them up. I'll stomp on them on the ground when I lay them down or I'll rake them on the trees just to kind of get them, get that apple scent in the air yeah, I'm with you. and sure enough you're giving that, all the that, secrets away now yeah I, you well, know what I, I got a few that i'm not going to give up here <laughs> <laughs> podcast number two <laughs> yeah i am siding more with your brother though bill i gotta say i'm more of that personality if you're gonna do it go big <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, bring in the truck load man every every one of them made fun of me this year for the amount of apples that i put out pre-season yep. but who got the and last laugh them, they, exactly, exactly. <laughs> they, they were all, you're never going to get raccoons and the bears and everything else. And sure enough, Tuesday afternoon, 3.20, I had this button block walk out to me at like 10 o'clock, 35, 40 yards, have the gun up on, you know, waiting, looking around, and I'm just watching, you know, just 
honestly, goodness, he's picking up an apple. He's looking at me. He's chewing it almost like he's laughing at me. You know, <laughs> picking another pull up, chewing on it, looking at me like he knows that I'm not going to do it with, with him. <laughs> and I watch this deer for a good 25 minutes. And then all of a sudden, I hear that grunt that, that you were just talking about. I, I need to hear uh, the often. grunt. Sorry. How did uh, it go? To be honest with you, I couldn't even I couldn't even imitate it. That's, <laughs> it's so, uh, just such a random noise that I heard. I never I never believed it because I've got my grunt. And we kind of think that when we make the noise with the grunt tube, it's, that's how I'm telling the deer go away. That, that's how good I am at calling with the grunt tube. That's oh, that's saying, go oh, away. Don't come here. You're like, yeah. I, I scare him away with my grunt. Go away call. <laughs> yeah, I mastered the go away call really well. So, so I hear this grunt and I turn my head and I see one of the biggest does I've ever seen. And I can't figure out what's going on, but I've still got my gun trained on this button buck, you know, 40 yards in front of me staring at me. So I can't move. Sure enough, behind the doe, there's a big buck come walking and my heart, I'm surprised this little button buck in front of me can't hear my heart pounding. You know, I've got the shakes going. I've got, and, and all I can do is I can stare at these deer that's still in this buck and they're about 125, 150 yards off to my three o'clock. Still got the gun trained on this button buck in front of me. Can't move. As these buck and doe come walking kind of across the, the pine plantation I'm hunting in, a second buck comes walking through. And when I see this second one, I thought it was a bull. It was so big in my eyes. The neck on it was so puffed out that it, to me, it reminded me of being a kid back on the farm, looking at the bull through the bullpen, just <laughs> mass. Now neck, you're trying not you know? to have that heart attack. Cause all you've got. Oh my. <laughs> and, 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 and you're like, all stay, stay, calm, watching, stay calm, stay calm. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what I'm trying to think. <laughs> yeah. But all the while I'm, I, I know that I've still got this little button book in front of me at 40 yards. I can't move. What do I do? How do I get my gun over? How do I get to where I can get in shooting position? They're still 150 yards away. So you're not like Bill. You're in an open air tree stand. I'm I'm in an open air tree stand. I've got a little bit of a, a cover on my my shooting rail to cover my legs because I got to keep that moving uh, with my back. But um, I can't move, and I'm wide open. Yep. And sure enough, like a real here, hunter. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I'm sitting there shivering. Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure enough, <laughs> I hear a, a second grunt, and it was enough to take that button buck's head and turn and look at those three deer, and it was enough for me to swing my gun around and pick a, a shooting lane. Oh. And all the while, now I've got my gun in the direction these deer are walking, and I pick a spot that I had actually sighted with my uh, range finder during the bull season. I knew that this area... We had actually made some marks. Here's my, my 50 yard. Here's my 100 yard. And I picked a spot kind of between the two of them that I could see, and they were working towards it. While I'm watching these three deer walking across the bush, the bigger of the two deer stops at a tree and starts shaking his rack in the tree. And this is something I've never seen before. I've always wanted to see this. Now, no matter what happens, this is amazing. Like he's crushing, he's hitting the branches, shaking. hitting the branches with his antlers, or is he hitting the tree? Hitting his, he's hitting the branches with his antlers. He's putting his, you know, his scent from his forehead on the, on the, you know, the tree. He's right above where I believe he was, you know, thinking about making a, a, a scrape on yep. the ground, right on you know, it. type of thing. You know, you've seen that in, in the videos and maybe you've seen it in live. I've never, and I'm shaking and all I keep thinking is, okay, five more steps. Okay. Four more steps. Just, just get to this point. And too many times in the past has it been two more steps, one more step, and they never take that last. <laughs> oh, yeah. And sure enough, he's taking those steps. And okay, you're behind these trees, two more steps. Okay, you're getting there. The first doe passes by. The second buck passes by. Okay, one more step. He takes that one step, and I pulled the trigger as fast as I could. I was like, you are you not were taking ready. another step. I know that oh feeling because you're like, I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe this is happening. Stay yes. calm. Stay calm. Don't have a heart attack. Don't have a heart attack. <laughs> Don't have a heart attack. That's, Stay calm. And the minute that that, that step, and all you're telling yourself is one more step, one more step, one more step. And the minute it happens, it's instinct at that point that your trigger exactly. finger just goes. I've been there. Yep. That's <laughs> awesome. I, I kept watching him, and I kept thinking, take one more step. Take one more step. And he steps between the trees and I pulled the trigger instantly and I'm telling you it, it was such it happened so fast but where I hunt is between these two swamplands and you know there's a ravine that's 10 yards away from 
the deer are standing. Sure enough, pull the trigger, and he takes off and goes down the swamp. I be if I hit him, it was one down and he was gone. Well, that happened. The second buck turned and ran, and I pulled out the trigger on the second buck, <sighs> thinking, okay, I got to get one of these two. I had no idea if I hit either one of them. Uh, but I was confident in my first shot, but because he didn't drop in a spot and I was shaking so bad and I've had a history of buck fever <laughs> and just, I don't, I, I'm, I'm, well, I'm at a point where it's like, do I sit here and cry? thinking I miss the thing? Do I jump down and go, do I call people? <laughs> what do I do? I'm so, like, my mind is going a mile. Oh, and miles it's a so hard to calm that down. Right. When you're going, I just yeah. want to get down and know if I got it. Did I get it? Did I get it? Yeah. And every, <laughs> every, Buddy is saying every everything you've been taught is just sit there. They give it an hour, yes. and you're like, I got it. And, and Scotty was on this; he'd be yelling at me right now because every time he shoots a deer, he'll message me. I just, I just shot one. You don't move until I get there. Do not well, move. And, Do and not. I can, I can speak from experience that that's. I have lost a, a, a very large deer in the past by not waiting. And it went in doubt, back out. That's the rule. Yeah. And I sat there and I got on the phone. And I, you know, everybody knows when I'm shooting anyway, just based on our proximity to each other. And I sent a text. I didn't tell anybody what it was. I didn't <laughs> tell anybody, you know, anything. I just said, me shooting need help tracking. And that was it. <laughs> and I sat in that tree stand for what seemed like forever. And it got to a point where I had to get down because I was afraid I was going to fall out because I was shaking so bad. So sure enough, unload the gun, lower it down, take my pack, lower it down. I'm trying to, to do things slowly just to pass the time. And I get down the tree and I sat right in the ground and I couldn't move. I was frozen because I knew that potentially 120 years away, I might have the biggest deer in my life or I might have the biggest disappointment for myself. And I see the three orange jackets come walking up towards me, my brother, my father, my buddy TJ. And I tell them, you still got me here? Yeah. I, yeah. And I tell them, guys, I had a big deer. I took two shots. There was a second deer. That was the second shot. They're over here. I don't know if I hit them. And I'm telling you, if I missed, I'm quitting hunting. <laughs> I, was, I, I was, I was, I was that at that point. I said, if I missed this deer, I'm done. <laughs> okay, so really quick, so, what were you using to shoot? What's your gun? So I use a, a thirty out six. It's a Remington that my dad has had for I don't know how long, and he has kind of gifted it to me to use. And, you know, it's my dad's gun, which again, for me is part of my experience being able to use something that, you know, was passed down to me yep. sitting in a spot that was passed down to me like that. To me, that's, that's where my mindset is with the hunt is all of these things, you know, go into the hunt is, is these traditions and everything else. So I'm using a, a semi-automatic 30 odd six that was passed down to me from my father and still his, but that's what I've been using for the last 10 years. Or so. That's awesome. He gave it so, to the right son, I guess. Right. <laughs> what that's a, yeah. <laughs> he let the right son use it because he knew he wanted to get a deer. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, hey, Bill. God, I've been maybe, keeping a lot of quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Maybe you should borrow his shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so, a story sure. for another day. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we start walking. We start walking towards where I think this deer may have been. And from what I recall, instantly we could not find any blood. We found lots of tracks, but there was no blood at the site where I no, thought that not, I was not a drop. Right here. And, and, and you know what? I'm not going to hijack this, but the when when you shoot a deer, ninety percent of the time you're wrong. As unless it falls right there, you're within five yards, one way or the other, of where that animal actually was. And it'll play out later on in the story as to what difference was. But when we got to where Jay said that that deer was, tracks, yes, blood, no. And my heart dropped. It was the worst feeling knowing that how did I miss this deer when I had all that time to set up. I was comf comf confident with my shot and comfortable, and now we can't find anything. And sure enough, you know, we start kind of walking. Now we're tracking the tracks. 
and oh. what we think are the tracks. See, and normally I'd be really we, distraught right now, but you already let us know this is successful. So I'm feeling okay. I'm with you still. I'm following yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's definitely, at least you know the end result. Yeah, but I, I know when that happens, man, you're just like, especially yeah. when it's a big one. Oh, crap. My <sighs> my heart, honestly, goodness, was just, I was so disappointed. But, you know, we, it was only the first 10 seconds of us getting to, you know, what I believe is the shot site. And we start over the ravine and we start finding tracks and then we find a little bit of blood. And now my heart is going miles a minute again. And now the excitement is starting again. And we start down the hill and sure enough, 50 yards or less from where I thought I shot this deer, you know, my dad's standing there whistling because he had already found the deer and we didn't even realize this. <laughs> We're just following tracks and blood. And my dad's standing there. And we go down. And sure enough, this monster deer, in my opinion, monster deer, biggest deer I've ever seen, the biggest deer I've ever obviously harvested, is laying there on the side of the hill. And it was the biggest exciting. Uh, I can, again, I'm losing my words because I can just imagine how excited I was at the time and still am. The feeling I've ever had. But I will say that, of course, we still had to go look and see if I got the second deer. So as much as we're excited, we still have some work to do. You know, we are a camp that when you take a shot, you don't just, I missed and move on. You look, you track, you put in as much time as possible. And we looked, looked, and are very confident that that second shot I took, I was shaking back from the first one. There's no chance to hit that second deer. Not an ounce of sign. It was, it, it was gone. Complete miss. So I'm comfortable to know that at least I, you know, didn't wound a second deer. Now I can go back and be incredibly excited with the first shot that I took. And, you know, Bill can attest, I've shot deer on this kind of ridge before and pulling them up the, up the, the slope was, is never fun. You know, they always run down to the swamp and Bill always gets mad at me because they always run down to the swamp and he's having to help them back up. But I can tell you him and TJ, they jumped on it. There was no questions asked. We'll, pull this thing out of the, the swamp for you. We're going to do what we need to. Let's get excited. And I can tell you one of the best experiences I've ever had and to be able to share it with my dad, my best friend, my brother, you know, all of these guys together, one of the best, greatest experiences. I don't know how I'll ever be able to top that. That's awesome. Yeah, it was, it was an incredible day. And I tell you what, I was honored to be able to, uh, to drag that deer up the ter- up the hill. I just wish he would shoot one and it would drop on the spot. But it never <laughs> and I tell you, I would feel a lot better after the shot if they would do that because I wouldn't have to worry about whether or not I hit him or not. But but I tell you, that was it was one of the best experiences I've ever had. Being able to, I guess, to share it with with my family and my best friend and and you know the experience of it and uh, so much experience. I don't know if Bill told you, but I've actually got a tattoo of the deer. Uh, oh, I got no that way. done. Did you really? Yeah, I got a tattoo. Yes, I did. So I've got, uh, I used the, the rack from my deer as the guide for my deer tattoo. And, and, uh, and it has been a very nice talking point for when I'm at work and talking to people in public because I've got it on my shoulder. And that's and I tell awesome. You, it was, what did it's I something do? I'll never yeah. forget. Yeah, that is wicked. Yeah, no, Bill didn't tell so me that's, that. That's wild. That that's, is a conversation piece, right? And like, that is yeah, so right. cool. That's my, my story of my, my most fun, greatest experience, um, best hunt trip that I've ever had to date was this past year and being successful and able to harvest that deer. And now it's it's yeah. all downhill from there. You might as well just... just it, I, I, yeah, I it said was it was downhill. <laughs> it was right at the bottom, I tell you right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're I, a tough mutter guy. You should have just went yeah, down there, yeah. threw it up on your shoulders, hiked that sucker out of there with little electrodes all zapping you. <laughs> yeah <laughs> there was there was no way tj and i were letting him drag it out i mean that that's part of the experience but yeah i don't know what you're gonna do for an encore now you've got the belt that with that deer what that deer weigh when we took uh, it into the- uh, field dressed it was 199 pounds oh yeah that's no guts that's a big deer yep and what was what the rack on it was uh, a solid so- Nine. It's a solid nine, <laughs> which is a, an argument in our family because if you can hang a keychain on it, it's supposed to count. And I've got a little nub that I keep saying is a ten, 
which would make it the biggest in the family. Okay. I got to tell you, I like that. I don't want to know the inches. I'm, I'm starting a whole new campaign. I'm saying it right now. We no longer measure deer in inches. We're going back to what my dad taught me and we only talk in points and I will give you that point. That's a 10 pointer. (laughs) (laughs) Perfect. Oh, Oh, Jake is kidding me. You went that way. Of course you would. <laughs> of course you would. Freaking right. But yeah, I that is so awesome. And, and that is I grew up with my, when my dad would shoot one and come home, how big dad? How big? Oh, it was an eight pointer, you know, and didn't know if it was, you know, 80 inches or 140 inches. It was an eight pointer. That's all you cared about. I'm going back yeah. to that. I'm done with this. Inch bull crap. Be, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm, that's where I'm at. And if, by all means, I mean, my dad has shot some massive size body deer before I even got to hunt. And it's just the, I, I don't know if it's the genetics, I guess would it would be, or the food source, but the antlers just didn't grow. I, mean, I got a wall of 20 plus racks on my wall that anybody would look at and go, you, you know, I wouldn't mount any of those. And now we do it ourselves, right? Like a self mount. And, but that's like the wall of racks between me and dad. We'll put them up there. There's some on his, on his cottage side on and stuff like that. But the majority go on my wall and they were some massive deer, but the racks just didn't grow massively huge. Now he got one a couple years ago in the same area that it, he, he mounted it. I mean, it's on the wall in the living room, uh, at, at times, mom will move it on him, but, <laughs> but yeah, so I'm going back to that. I give you Jay, that's a 10 pointer. I'm down, buddy. You can hang a keychain. <laughs> I like that. That is the rule. You can hang a keychain on it. It's, it's a point. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I will say that that's, that's the way I, I look at it too. Cause I can tell you when we, brought that up my, my dad couldn't help but take the extra little jab at me saying it's a nine pointer and i couldn't understand <laughs> what he was talking about i what do you mean it's a nine well it's a nine pointer and he and i couldn't get it and finally said well i've got a nine your brother's got a nine so <laughs> I'm only got a nine. you don't win <laughs> yeah <laughs> so that's why i get it i get it yeah <laughs> yeah nope typical non-typical those terms don't exist anymore they're gone inches i don't even <laughs> care what that is it's a 10 pointer jay is is king tom <laughs> yeah, I'll give it to him because I tell you what that you see, you'll get Jay to send you a picture of the mount, and the, it, the mount was phenomenal. The, the the field dressing, or sorry, the, the skinning job on it was, was enough that the taxidermist had a lot to do, and there was nothing about that mount that you look at it and say that should be in a, a magazine any day of the week. That's the, awesome. The experience should be written in in, in the story. But I tell you what, it was. I, I'm, I'm proud of him. I'm happy to be part of it. And I, I just don't know what he's going to do for an uncle right now. <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you, if I don't ever shoot another deer, it, I will be just as happy as I am today. I'm going to ask you uh, that this uh, November. <laughs> yeah. yeah come, talk to me on Thursday of the rifle hunt this year. And I'll tell you, <laughs> yeah. I'm still as happy. But I, I do want to take one more point and say, maybe for a future podcast, you should talk to my brother because we do call him the surgeon when it comes to skinning and gutting deers. No, is, you know what? I could see that. I totally is, could see that. And the, he is the reason why that taxidermist was able to do what he did is, is because my brother's time and effort. And, and I tell you, like we said with us, it, it's a group effort and I couldn't have done it without all the, the help and everything from these guys. So I will give him some props much as we like to grind the gears, he, no, he does that's, deserve some, hey, some props there. Hey, we might change the name. He's got a hoodie on the way that has quotes on the sleeve, redneck country. And on the sleeve, it says, you know, the almost guy, but we might change that to like big buck caddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, he's but, even maybe doc, doctor almost guy, <laughs> but I know Bill shot some deer too. So I can't ride. No, he Bill, sure I can't, has. I can't chirp you. I, turkey season. Okay. I'll chirp you. I can't chirp you on the deer side. You've, you've got me beat on that, on that front for sure. And, uh, but yeah, that is, that's a wicked awesome story. And it is, it encapsulates, you told it so well, it encapsul- encapsulates everything that we're about the whole reason. And I'm going to, if I can plug for a second, but it's the whole reason of redneck country. It is the de facto standard of what redneck country was started for from my dad being the patriarch and taught me to hunt. And that's the morals and the values and being out there. It isn't about killing anything. It's about sharing in the outdoors. And dad will tell you that and be, and you, you guys are exactly that to a T, which is awesome. Which is, I, Hey, why, 
why we're all on the Redneck Country podcast. But but I love it. You told it very well. I mean, I was right with you the whole time. It is awesome. I've been uh, through those experiences, and then to be able to have your family there and, and drag it out, be there when you find it. Everybody's fist pumping and pumped up and and massive buck down and uh man. That's awesome. It was good. Yeah, I love appreciate it. Appreciate you coming um, on and telling the story, kid. It was fun. Yes. Thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, we got to have you back again, on. I look forward to the future. Yeah, <laughs> we got to because we're pushing some serious time now, and I don't care. I'm going to put it up there anyway. But the um, <laughs> it, it, you'll have, I hope you have a long drive <laughs> to listen to this one. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it. It, it, it. It's perfect in my mind. But I, I still I want that insight more into the Toms. And I got a little bit I got it on how you guys divvy it up. I still think that there, I, I need to poke and prod and, and f- punch some holes in the in some of the. You can't give it to you all at once. It's overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. so we just got to give it to you in drips and drabs. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah. Appreciate you coming on and. Uh, it was, that was an awesome. It was excellent. Thank you guys again. I really, really appreciate it. You do. And that'll do it for this week, folks, for the Redneck Country Podcast. I'm Bill, the Almost Guy Tom. And I'm Todd. And thanks for listening. And folks, if you want to be part of the podcast or you want to give us some feedback or really contact us about anything, feel free to email us at podcast at theredneckcountry.com. Again, that's podcast at theredneckcountry.com. Thanks for listening. Talk to you again next week.